just talk to them like a daddy would talk to their ch his children. I talk to them out of the Word of God and out of my heart. And then the Lord reminded me as a young preacher of something that I had studied hard to be ready to do, and that is the wedding vows. And I reached over, and I took her hand, and I pulled the wedding band off of her finger. And I said, not long ago, you stood before some preacher, and you pledged your love to each other. And I began to talk about what that wedding band represented, that it was a marriage made in heaven and should not be broken upon this earth, that the gold was pure, symbolizing the love that they had once known for each other, and how that they were to keep themselves one to another as long as they both shall live. As I walked through those vows of the wedding, I watched God begin to move, in her heart. And in a moment, she began to weep just like her husband. And I said to her, would you let me lead you in renewing your vows to one another? And he said, oh, I want to, preacher. And she dropped her head and said, yes, sir. I took her hand in his he took the ring and slid it back onto her finger. And we walked through the wedding vows one more time. What had been hatred and what had been hurt and what had been a harsh experience in their lives and they were ready to throw away everything. When love was allowed to come back to the surface, the darkness of all that was separating them was caused to flee. And Jesus began to live in their lives. There in that home, not only did they find each other, but they found Christ as their Savior and Lord. Now, my brothers and sisters, people who are lost are lost in the dark. We shouldn't wonder why some people do the things they do. That's what people do under cover of darkness. Do you remember a few years ago, when a power grid up in New York, Canada, somewhere where it failed and the whole city of New York was plunged into darkness immediately. Nothing worked. There was no lights anywhere. And in just a matter of minutes, the people found out what kind of society they lived in because looters began to break the windows out of stores and go in and take whatever they wanted. They had pictures of people with televisions on their shoulders as they walked out with them and, and people with armloads of clothing and, and they were had, had boxes and bags where they'd been to the jewelry store and they were gathering up all the valuables that they could because in the dark, the dark that was in their hearts was allowed to come out and they were seen for what they really are. Sin is darkness. The coin was lost in the dwelling. It was lost in the dark. And finally, it was lost in the dirt. For the Bible says that she took her broom and she began to sweep, sweep the dirt up in the floor in order to try and find that one lost coin. Notice that she didn't care how much dirt there was. Notice that it didn't bother her where the dirt was. The only thing that was of concern to her was the coin that was lost in the dirt. Now, folks, if we'll get beyond the fact that people are in the dirt and realize that their souls are more precious than any other thing, then it will drive us out into our world to seek to win a lost humanity to the Lord Jesus Christ. I suppose if there's anything after these 40 years that I have tried to serve as a pastor that burns in my soul more today than ever before is the few people that I have won. And yet in my world, 
I am noted as one of the leading evangelistic pastors in our entire state, having baptized into the fellowship of the churches that I have pastored 1,956 people. I had hoped to reach 2,000, but that apparently is not to be. But I want to just say to you, while I want to at times say, boy, I've had a pretty good record. I yet look around me and there's so many that are lost. Have you been by a high school campus lately and looked and realized how many there are who are lost in the dirt of this world? Have you seen the middle schools and the elementary schools in like fashion where so many children uh, show the evidence of their lostness? Have you listened like I do to teachers who talk about how they can't handle the situation and they're considering quitting their teaching profession because the children are bringing so much trash with them into the school classroom that they just can't handle it? They're lost in the dirt. We were allowed to walk into a room where very few people have ever been as a nation just a few years ago when we were allowed to go into the Oval Office in times of privacy and hear and see some of the things that went on between our president and Monica Lewinsky. They're lost in the dark. You say, but preacher, he's a member of a Baptist church. He's a lost church member is what he is. You say, that's judging. Absolutely so, because the Bible says that we are to judge righteously, and by their fruits you shall know them. And wherever you look today, you don't have to search to find them. There are people who are lost in the dirt of this world, and the further from God they go, the dirtier they get. Now, everybody says, well, we won't pay much attention to that. Why, they're not really much lost. But how lost do you have to be to be truly lost? My friend, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, You may be on the pages of the magazines of this country and have the acclaim of the world, but you're headed toward an eternity without God unless you get saved. It's not just the old boy that's out yonder shooting dope into his veins, and it's not that that man and woman who is engaged in adulterous activities and all the other the other crud that there is in the world, but it's everybody that does not know Jesus is lost in the dirt. And you've got to go where they are in order to get them out. When Jesus raised Lazarus. He came out of the darkness of the tomb. But I want you to notice a strange thing. If Jesus brought him up out of the grave, don't you think he could have given him a new suit of clothes? Wouldn't have been anything for him. But he brought him out with the same old grave clothes on him. And his body, you remember, his sister said, why, He's been in the grave four days. By now, he stinks. That means his body was corrupted and it had broken down and all of that uh, had been oozed out into those grave clothes. But do you remember what Jesus said? Loose him and let him go. In order for that man to be brought out of the tomb, it took the power of God. But in order for that man to be restored, it took the involvement of those that loved him. I don't think anybody had to beg Mary and Martha to go down there and begin to unwind all of that off of him. They got the smell of the grave on their hands. They got the dirt of the tomb on their hands. They stood with one that they loved and they little by little by little unwrapped him so that he could be free. And when you're in the business of rescuing the perishing, you'll find that you have to still get the smell of the grave.